Hi, my name is Shah. I'm a developer advocate at Red Hat, and today I'm going to talk about generative AI and its application to modernization using Conveyor AI. Generative AI, artificial intelligence, refers to a type of AI technology that can generate new content based on the data it has been trained on. So unlike traditional AI, which does predictions and decisions based on, a, based on data, generative AI can take those data instances, such as text, images, audios, and videos, and then resemble that with the training structured data and provide that content. Most recently, OpenAI introduced ChatGPT last year. Meta introduced Llama, GitHub with Copilot, all good, example, good examples of generative AI. Most recently, Grok, Claude, Phi3, OpenELM, all large language models specifically trained on data or synthetic data that, that can generate content. This is great because now we have the ability to generate code as well. And using the RAG approach, we can provide context into these LLMs. So the training data that they have been trained on, they can also contextualize that with the data set that we give in. Now this creates a fascinating and interesting situation because can we actually use this and apply this to modernization where we can contextualize that information into an LLM? Let's take a look more closer. Before we go on, let's take a look at the need for modernization. We have a lot of legacy application footprint, and these applications has, have been created over a period of time. Not just that they have been using frameworks and design patterns or code patterns that were written maybe 10 or 15 or 20, 30 years ago. They are not compatible with the way we are deploying our applications to the cloud. The inability to make changes to the stack it, and the, the hardness to develop new features creates this technical debt because the frameworks are still quite old. It also hampers you to be more agile. So you're unable to make these new features into the system. And the business is demanding for these new features to keep relevant. Security risks even though the frameworks are perhaps stable and run in the operations, they still have certain security risks. Um, and, and we have seen this over time and again with um, CVEs coming into these older frameworks that are hard to fix, there is hard to find skill set for it, and the maintenance and cost just goes higher and higher. So fair enough, <clears throat> these are some of the challenges that we have with modernization. How can this be solved? Conveyor AI is working on a goal to improve the economics of replatforming and refactoring applications using generative AI. Kai, Conveyor AI, is an ongoing effort in the ecosystem to apply generative AI to application modernization. If you're not aware about Conveyor, the modernization project within the CNCF as a sandbox project. Conveyor AI is more than predictive code completion. It is not just writing specific code for a specific small situation like calling a REST endpoint, but it is more taking into consideration the current code base that you have, looking at that, looking at the patterns, and then modernizing that technology into something new. A good example is using message-driven beans with JMS into reactive programming, for example, using Quarkus. To avoid fine tuning, we use the rack approach to do this. Another interesting part about Conveyor AI is that it's not locked into a specific model. It can have multiple models that it can use. So assuming you have .NET code that needs to be modernized, you might not find a specific model for doing that. And you might find a very specific model that helps you with that. So you should have the ability to choose the right model for the right language, framework, tools that fits your needs and gives you the right output. Let's take a look <clears throat> into a bit how Conveyor AI is using this RAG approach. Conveyor uses the data generated 
the code generation suggestions that it has, the source code analysis, which has been there with Conveyor for a long time, pinpoint the issues adopt, adopting a new technology. So assuming a very simple example where you have Java X and you want to move Java X to Jakarta E since the Java X libraries are no longer used. In that case, Conveyor AI would be able to do the static code analysis and tell you where the problem exists. By doing that, it will then craft and tailor a prompt and that prompt will be specific with this knowledge that it has received, contextualizing it and sending it over to the LLM. The LLM will then generate the code and send that code back into the ID so the developer can accept or reject the code changes at that point. So let's take a look into how this all works on a, on a broader scale. A developer signs in, opens up their IDE, when they use their IDE, they check out the code. Let's say it's an old Java E application. So is our case in the demo, which we will go over in a minute. Once the code is checked out, they will run an analysis, a static code analysis, which will run through the conveyor.io static code analysis. Assuming they have the AI conveyor AI extension also in their VS code, they will then use that analysis, review the code, and ask for generation. Once they ask for generation, Conveyor AI will look at that code analysis, create a specific prompt and contextualize that and send that via RAG into the large language model. The large language model will then return the code and that code would be then generated and passed on to the IDE at the developer. The developer can then choose whether they like to accept this change or not. Let's take a deeper look with our demo. So in our demo use case, we are going to migrate a Java EE application to a Quarkus application using large language models and Conveyor AI. First, we clone our Git repository, which is the cool store app. Once we have cloned that cool store app, we will open it in our favorite IDE, in this case VS Code, with the extension of the MTA. We configure our sources. So here we configure that this is the cool store migration analysis. We go in and select a CLI, which is Cantra, to make sure that the static code analysis will run with our Cantra CLI. We then choose the targets, for example, in this case, Quarkus Jakarta EE. And finally, the custom rules that will look into the different static code analysis. We run this analysis. And once we run this analysis, we can have an HTML report, look at the incidents, look at the technology, or browse the documentation as required to see the different changes that might be required. We can also see this in the ID. We look at the analysis. So let's take a look at inventory entity. The inventory entity has Java X, and of, obviously Java X is no longer used. Let's take a look at the details. Java X uh, persistence is now uh, Jakarta persistence. How about we generate the simple, simple use case using LLM? We send this into Conveyor AI. Conveyor AI then generates that code via LLMs and makes a suggestion. Over here, you can see it makes a suggestion that it moves Java X to Jakarta. <clears throat> Let's take a look at another example. How about migrating MDB, Message Driven Beam, to reactive messaging? Here, again, multiple incidents. Let's take a look at one of these incidents. We have a Jakarta EE. JMS elements and we should remove them and you go to small Rye reactive messaging. Here you can see that there is message driven bean activation config properties and obviously we want to make sure that that goes into small Rye reactive and here you can see incoming topic orders generated by LLM using Conveyor AI. Not just that, also the exceptions and the rest of the codes, application scoped, etc. All of that on message receiving all the new type of pattern is now part of it, part of, uh, part of the code. Let's go ahead and accept it because this change looks good. Let's take a look at some more examples. What about EJB to REST? Enterprise Java Beans no longer used in the same way. What about we can use Quarkus to do it? How about using 
converting that. So stateless annotations should now move to application scope. A simple example, but it also has logic in the code. It has the developer's code. What it does here, it is takes the shipping service, removes the remote, and generates a REST endpoint. Now we have a calculate shipping endpoint that actually is able to do a get query with the query patterns, all for a REST API. So from a simple EJB, now you have a REST endpoint using Conveyor AI and the large language models. It also has other functions and all those functions, for example, cal calculate shipping insurance is also using a get request in this example. The exception handling with bad requests, etc., is also there. How about we change the clients, the producers, into reactive streams as well? Here's an example of GMS context. Again, with the GMX context, it is, it is going to be able to convert that. So let's take a look at the details. A GMX topic should actually be an emitter into a channel using reactive. You know, doing JNDI is no longer with this technology. So how do we do it? Generate that code, get the application scope over there. You see the channels, channels is orders. You see the broadcast emitter from actually JMX context. Now you have an emitter and you also have an on push function that sends that specific JSON. But sometimes we might not need code. For example, we don't need a REST application because Quarkus can handle that directly. What about the cart endpoint? Let's just go in and change an entire endpoint. We can convert an entire endpoint that was using maybe an MVC style application into a Quarkus REST application. Perfect. Let's try to run this. To run this, we open our project. We open our project panel. We look at our REST code here. Let's try to start Quarkus dev mode. A Quarkus dev mode will help you to do live coding, continuous testing on your developer machine. But first, let's take a look at the console. What does the dev mode have for us? We have a bunch of extensions also migrated. So in this case, the POM file is already migrated to Quarkus. We can see all the configurations. We can see that it has also provisioned a test container for us because we are using Postgres and Quarkus does that with its integration with test containers. Perfect, run our app. And here we can see that our app is now running locally. So from a Java EE application, now we have a Quarkus application running. How about we add an OpenShift extension and deploy this onto OpenShift. We create a new project into our OpenShift environment, assuming that we have already logged into our OpenShift environment, and then we provision a database for our production use case. So we should have a database that runs in our OpenShift environment as well. Once we've done that, let's quickly take a look at our application properties because Java E doesn't have application properties, Quarkus does. It has a production profile for the database. Let's take a look at that as well. We have our database, perfect. It's deployed in OpenShift. Let's try to deploy our Quarkus application into OpenShift as well using the OpenShift extension. Now we're able to create the image, build the image from here, and then push that image onto the OpenShift environment. Once the push is successful, we will then be able to see our application and it's spinning up. While it's spinning up, yes, the logs are there, perfect. Now let's try to take a look at the resources and try to run our application in production. We have a running application in production. Perfect, so that was an interesting demo. The end-to-end -end use case showcasing migration from Java EE to Quarkus. We took a simple application, a cool store application, and we converted that into a Quarkus application and we deployed it onto OpenShift ensuring that developer in, its, uh, in their inner loop are able to use this. Kai understands simpler migrations like Java X to Jakarta E. Kai also understands GMS to reactive MDB and REST. As an example, it is more than just predictive code completion. It actually understands with its inference of all the knowledge that it has about application and its the static code analysis that is being done and use the RAG approach to contextualize that information to the large language models. And finally, it is model agnostic. So you can run multiple languages and generate code as you would like. For more information, visit our website, 
or learn more on our Red Hat Developers page. Thank you for listening.